formerly Elam Children's Home to purchase eggs for the Easter egg hunt. The ladies' ground bag luncheon is tomorrow at 12 noon in the Fellowship Hall. All ladies are invited to <coughs> lunch, no frills, no fun, no fuss for fun fellowship. And we really do have a lot of fun, so y'all come join us. I thought you was going to say no frills, no fun, but, but it, it is fun from what I hear. It is fun. Yeah, <laughs> it is fun. Uh, the Children's Department is asking for donations of pre-filled Easter eggs for the Children's Easter Egg Hunt the end of the month. Please bring your filled eggs to the church office. Easter Sunday will be here very soon. Please bring fresh cut flowers and colorful greenery to the church early Easter Sunday morning to play, be placed on our Easter Sunday flower cross. Meetings for this week. Trustees will meet Monday at 5.30. Finance will meet Tuesday at 5.30. And Leadership Council will meet Wednesday at 5.30. All meetings are in the Wesley classroom. Thank you. Thank you, Dottie. I want you to take a moment. You've got a you've got an insert in your bulletin, and we're gonna we're gonna do part of it for a call to worship. But I wanted you to look uh, on the interior where it has uh, the 1908 Social Creed. This is the uh, uh, social creed of the Methodist Episcopal Church from 1908. And um, I, I found the language interesting and also uh, informative. You and I have been concerned about people and about how people relate to God since we've been Methodist. This didn't just start recently. Uh, this is a cornerstone of the Methodist Church. The Methodist, Epis Methodist Episcopal Church stands for equal rights and complete justice for all people in all stations of life. For the principle of conciliation and arbitration in industrial dissensions. Isn't that interesting that that's way up there at the top? Isn't that great? We were concerned about the worker. For the protection of the worker from dangerous machinery, occupational diseases, injuries, and mortality. For the abolition of child labor. For the regulation of the conditions of labor for women as shall safeguard the physical and moral health of the community. For the suppression of the sweating system. For the gradual and reasonable reduction of hours of labor to the lowest practical point with work for all. Boy, don't you know that took some committee meetings to hammer out. And the last thing they got shoved through was the gradual and reasonable. Because you know, the folks that were working the workers weren't all happy at all about gradual. Well, they were happy about gradual. And one man's reasonable is another man's unreasonable, as I've grown to learn. For, uh, for that degree of leisure for which all is the condition of the highest human life, for a release from employment one day in seven, for a living wage in every industry, for the highest wage that each industry can afford, and for the most equitable division of the products of industry that can be ultimately be devised. For the recognition of the golden rule in the mind of Christ, as the supreme law of society and the sure remedy for all social ills. Folks, I'd like to tell you that since 1908, all of those conditions have been resolved. But I'd be lying. But I think the latter part still holds the key. For the recognition of the golden rule and the mind of Christ, as the supreme law of society and the sure remedy for all social ills. To have the mind of Christ and to do unto others as you would have done unto you. We're still working on it. We're not there yet. But as long as you and I draw breath and we walk with Jesus, we're on the way. Would you stand as you're able? Let's pass the peace. May the peace of Christ be with you.
The Lord be with you. Join me in our call to worship with the liturgy, uh, United Methodist Social Creed. You'll find that liturgy. It looks like this. We've got some bolded parts that we will say together. And this is a liturgy founded on our current United Methodist Social Creed, which we have also included in this handout for you to, uh, to look at. God in the Spirit revealed in Jesus Christ calls us by grace to be renewed in the image of our Creator that we may be one in divine love for the world. Today is the day God cares for the integrity of creation, wills the healing and wholeness of all life, weeps at the plunder of earth's goodness, and so shall we. Today is the day God embraces all hues of humanity, delights in diversity and difference, favors solidarity, transforming strangers into friends. And so shall we. Today is the day God cries with the masses of starving people, despises growing disparity between rich and poor, demands justice for workers in the marketplace. And so shall we. Today is the day God deplores the violence in our homes and streets, rebukes the world's warring madness, humbles the powerful, and lifts up the lowly. And so shall we. Today is the day God calls for all nations and peoples to live in peace, celebrates where justice and mercy embrace, exalts when the wolf grazes with the lamb. And so shall we. Today is the day God brings good news to the poor, proclaims release to the captives, gives sight to the blind, and sets the oppressed free. O oh God, keep our whole country under your protection. Wipe out sin from this land. Lift it up from the depth of sorrow, O oh Lord, our shining light. Save us from deep grief and misfortune, Lord of all nations. Bless us with your wisdom so that the poor may not be oppressed and the rich may not be oppressors. Make this a nation having no ruler except God, a nation having no authority but that of love. Amen. Amen. And turn in your hymnals to page 430. We will sing, O oh, Master, let me walk with thee. <laughs>
seated this morning. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Uh, we uh, received another phone message from my friend Ed Sunday Winters about Umcourt uh, that is still at work, and I'll share that with you here in a bit. Uh, but it is through your faithfulness in giving, your generosity, that ministries like Umcourt and, and ministries here in our own conference and ministries here in our own community are able to take place. So I'm, I'm grateful for your faithfulness. Let's receive our Lord's tithes and offerings this morning. God, thank you for the blessing of giving. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of receiving. We pray, God, that you would bless this offering. May it be used for your glory and for the goodness of your people. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beads first. Everybody got to have beads. 
And you know what? This works out perfectly. Give her a give her some beans too. Yeah, cool. We got everybody. All right. So today is Saint Patrick's Day. That's why I have on green so that you will not pinch me. Nobody, nobody gets pinched today. Do you know who St. Patrick is? Actually, his name is St. Padraic. And so it's Paddy's Day with a D instead of a T. I learned that from an Irish comedian. I'm assuming he was telling me the truth because there wasn't a joke that followed that. So today is St. Patrick's Day and uh, St. Patrick was, um, was captured as a slave, as a child, a young man and um, eventually got loose and became uh, a Christian. And after he became a Christian, he heard uh, a voice that he assumed was the voice of God telling him to go back to those people that had captured him as a slave and to serve God there. So he gave his life to uh, the Gallic people, to uh, uh, Ireland, Scotland, all those places. And uh, he's the patron saint of Ireland. Supposedly, he got rid of all the snakes in Ireland. I don't know. Hadn't been to Ireland. But I just soon he come down south here and get rid of all the snakes we've got. I understand they're warming up and getting out. So y'all be careful if you get in the woods. So St. Patrick gave of his life. So today, we want to help people give. We want to help all of the children in the Embrace Alabama's kids to have an Easter egg hunt, just like we're going to have an Easter egg hunt. Everybody deserves to have a little fun, and the Easter egg hunts are always fun, and the goodies are always good. Miss Janet's going to make cupcakes for the world, and, and we're going to have what else? Um, candy. Candy. Cookies. Cookies. We're going to jack y'all up with sugar and then send you home with your parents. <laughs> or grandparents. Parents, just toss them off to the grandparents. You've got things you've got to do, right? All right, I want you guys to help me. I want to thank God, and then I'm going to turn y'all loose, and I want you to take a half of an egg and go around and see if people will give you money so that we can help the Embrace Alabama kids have an Easter egg hunt and have some fun, just like we're going to have on the Saturday before Easter. Okay? Now you got it. Let me see your. Let me see your. Oh, I need money eyes. Oh, that will do it. That right there will get it. That you kind of got to do your head down and go. Right. Let's thank God that He gives us all that we need. God, thank you that you give us all that we need. And then in Jesus, you gave us the perfect example of how we are to live. We're to live a life of love. Jesus gave his life, and so we give ours. Lord, thank you for your blessing. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for St. Patrick. And thank you for all the people who teach us how to love one another and to give of ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so half an egg, half an egg. You want you want water? You, who wanted me? Alright, we'll get what we got. Alright, here we go. Alright, dude. Which one do you want? You want the big one or the little one? Alright, let's go for it. Okay, balcony. Here's your chance to play softball. Hey, Coop. Run up in the balcony. You got it? Alright, go for it, dude. Hit the balcony, dude. Wow. I need more adults telling me what it is that I should do. I'm lost as a teenager. How'd you do? Do I? 
Are you kidding? Oh, really? Come on. Here. Maybe you just need a little seed right there. You got it? All right, you're the man. Thank you. Thank you. You got it, dude? Thank you. All right. Oh, I, did I not mention y'all need to bring the money back? <laughs> That's, that was an important part. Cool, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we got, we got you, man. Thank you. All right, there we go. Oh, y'all sent the A team upstairs. That's the way to do that. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Good work. Good work. Oh, look at you. Oh, wow. She, she got all resources. Look at y'all. I didn't get one. That's all right, dude. What you got is important. That's good. All right. Let her have that. All right. It all counts. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Cool. All right. Well, thank you all for serving and helping, and thank you all for giving. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. Head out, guys. Thank you. That's a lively bunch this morning, isn't it? Okay, let's be lively too. Page, <laughs> turn to page 445 and we'll sing Happy the Home for God is There. fussing at your kids or hollering at your spouse. I thought all of that was necessary for a fine Christian home. Or so they told me back in the day. I think they might have been wrong. Love seems to be the key. Are you noticing a theme in what we're talking about today? Love is the key. Let's go to the Lord in prayer in our prayers of the people. As we take a few moments to center ourselves in silence, I ask you to offer up those needs and concerns, those, uh, those heartfelt things that you can only take to the Lord. I ask you to lift those up in the silence of our moments together.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the world we've prayed for this morning, Lord, we've prayed for the world to recognize you. We've prayed for the world to be affected by you and by the people who claim you. We've prayed for the world in all of its uh, failures and in all of its possibilities. God, help your church to live out the gospel in ways that make a difference in this world. This world where your influence can be visibly seen and physically felt and accomplished through your faithful people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we pray for your church this morning. Thankful that your church is at work everywhere. And that, God, you have blessed the United Methodist Church through its connection to be at work with, with people in Vermont, with people in Tanzania, with people in Auburn and Tuscaloosa, and even in Jackson, Alabama. God, we're grateful for your church and her all her many expressions and her in all her many locations. God, you've placed your churches there, not harem scarum, but with a purpose and with a power that this world does not understand and that this world will not prevail against the power of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are hurting in body, mind, and spirit this morning, Lord. For our friends that are in the hospital, that are those that are recovering from falls and from surgeries and knee replacements and all of that, Lord. We praise, and praise you and thank you for those that are getting stronger day by day. We pray for our friends that, uh, uh, that sit with our loved ones. Praying, God, you grant them peace and patience and strength. God, we pray for those who are mourning, whose hearts are broken. May your Holy Spirit comfort them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We thank you, Lord, for the communion of saints, for the grace, for the grit and the gumption that they have taught us as they lived out their lives with us. We thank you, Lord, for all their lessons that they taught us. We thank you, Lord, for all of the blessings that they bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, for giving them to us for a while. We pray, Lord, that our memories, too, might be for a blessing one day. We give you thanks especially this morning for Matron Purdue, Jones Purdue. Lord, she showed us how to disagree in many different things, but to agree on you, Jesus, and to serve together and to lead us by example and by love. May her memory be for a blessing, Lord Jesus, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray together, Lord, as you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you, choir. It's 
So our passage today is a, a final judgment and uh, in which the Son of Man rewards the truly righteous. Now, that is the ones who may not have been, may not have made it according to the world standards, but the ones who are truly righteous. They may not have made it according to the religious elite standards. They, in the preceding passages, Jesus makes it pretty clear that uh, to whom much is given, much is required. And uh, the religious leaders in Israel have focused on rules and regulations instead of works of piety and works of mercy. And so they have fallen short. And Jesus is trying to teach them, uh, as he is trying to teach us, that we need to be faithful and we need to follow uh, Jesus and we need to do those good works, not only the uh, works of piety, but also the works of mercy. We need to do good works. We have focused on the great commandment, that is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And the great commission to go into all the world uh, to make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And lo, Jesus said, I am with you always. We have focused on the great commandment and the great commission as United Methodist Christians. Our church has focused on that as well. Our denomination has focused on the great commandment and the great commission. And so what, how do United Methodist Christians serve God and neighbor? How do we live out those commandments? How do we live out that commission to make disciples? I remember when I was growing up, when I was a, a younger, more foolish man, people would say, well, those Methodists, they don't preach the Bible. They preach a social gospel. Now you had to understand, they said it that way, social gospel. Because they had to spit when they said it. Well, come to find out what the Methodists were doing is what Jesus said to do. Feed people. Clothe people. Defend people. Love people. But Lord, there wasn't a but. There's not a but in that. The buts don't come until you get to the goats that depart to everlasting um, Oh, I'm sorry, eternal punishment, not everlasting fire. I think that comes a little later. So we have done a good job as United Methodists serving the Lord in our great commandment and our great commission. And we do that partly through what is called our global ministries. United Methodist Church has something called the global ministries. It's the international mission humanitarian relief and development organization of the United Methodist Church. And it works all around the world in 115 countries to equip people, to transform people in places for God's mission. It, it connects congregations and conferences and organizations and supports evangelism and church revitalization. It provides humanitarian relief through UMCOR. I'm going to tell you another story about UMCOR here in just a second. The four mission goals of our global ministries is to make disciples of Jesus Christ, strengthen, develop, and renew Christian congregations and communities, alleviate human suffering, and seek justice, freedom, and peace. That's our global ministries, part of the United Methodist Church. You remember last week I told you about my friend Ed? My friend Ed, who's a Baptist preacher pastoring a United Church of Christ in Greensboro, Vermont, via Phoenix City from the hills of Tennessee. He called me while we were gone. And I didn't know that he had called until I saw a voicemail. Ed says, remember when I told you about the Umcor buckets after the flood of 23? That, that's what they call it now, the flood of 23. The flood of 23. 
He said, today in our long-term recovery group meeting, Reverend David Aruda is being introduced. He is from UMCOR, and he is bringing nearly half a million dollars with him. We still have 82 homes in our region of the state that are unrecovered from the flood. Reverend David is a godsend. So grateful for the folks who sent him. Y'all tell your people how grateful we are. And yes, I'm nearly in tears. Love, Ed. Folks, that's your United Methodist Committee on Relief dollars at work. And it's because of your faithfulness and your generosity because you have been, you have experienced the generous love of God and the faithfulness of Christ. You've been able to give because of that. And God is at work through all of our United Methodist churches, even in places where you might not ever visit. I encourage you to go to Greensboro, Vermont. It's supposed to be a real pretty little place. They've got a They've got a cave somewhere nearby there that they make and store cheeses in. There may or may not be a brewery connected with that fromagerie or that cave. But there apparently is some real nice people that live in Greensboro, Vermont. I don't know if there's a Methodist church, but I know there's a Methodist presence. And sometimes it comes in the form of buckets. What does our conference do? What do we're, we're part of the Alabama West Florida Conference of the United Methodist Church. What does our conference do to make disciples of Jesus Christ, strengthen, develop, and renew Christian congregations, alleviate human suffering, to seek justice, freedom, and peace? What does our conference do to feed, to clothe, to support, to love? Well, part of our conference outreach ministries are Alabama, uh, Alabama Rural Ministry. Uh, Colonel Lisa Pierce is head of that. And uh, they go and put roofs on houses. They, they uh, shore up walls. They put in new sheetrock. They, they take care of people who are unable to get those things done by themselves. We'll talk a little bit about our kingdom builders here in just a moment. Another part of our conference outreach ministries is what Janet's involved with in Communities of Transformation, a, 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 an organization that helps put together people who have resources in themselves with people who are in poverty, who want to work their way out of poverty and they don't need a hand out, they need a hand up. That's part of what we do as Alabama West Florida Conference United Methodist Christians. Mary Ellen's Hearth, Nellie Burge, Bright Bridge Ministries, Embrace Alabama and Embrace Florida's Kids, our Methodist Homes, the Inner City Mission in Mobile, the Quad W Missionary Internships. Our conference is at work in a lot of different places all around our state and also in Florida, helping people helping people to see Jesus. It's hard to get people to listen to somebody talking about Jesus when they don't see Jesus. When the words that are coming out of your mouth and the actions of your hands and the eyes don't match the words that are coming out. It's hard for people to hear the good news over the rumbling of their belly when they're hungry. It's hard for people to hear the good news of Jesus when they're afraid that they're going to be hit or harmed or abandoned. And that's where our conference comes in. That's where we come in. What is it we do? Jesus said in Matthew 9, in the spirit of Matthew 9, where, where Jesus went about to all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. What do we do in that same spirit? We have Sunday school classes that, that, that have funds that they use to, to minister to folks who find themselves in dire straits through no fault of their own. We can all find ourselves harassed, can't we? By the vicissitudes of life. We can all find ourselves harassed sometimes 
a fire, a tragic death, a storm, an unsettling diagnosis can all leave us harassed, needing care, support, and that of a gentle shepherd. I'm grateful for some recent support for the kingdom builders to build ramps for folks who have need of them and who they need to be able to get access in and out of their homes. What a blessing to be able to give to that, to be a part of that. Those of us who've recently experienced back and knee problems or are continuing to experience back, knee, or ankle problems, a rickety set of steps will get on your last nerve, won't they? And sometimes they make you fall on your last nerve. I'm thankful for Kingdom Builders who takes care of some of those situations. What are our dreams for ministry and mission? I ask our Sunday afternoon disciple class what their uh, last Sunday, what their dreams for mission and ministry were. This was our this was our last being United Methodist Christians living a life of grace and hope. This is our last class session. And so I ask this question. If money, time, or resources were unlimited, what ministry opportunities and mission opportunities would you like to see here at First United Methodist Church, Jackson? I reminded them that all answers were valid. It was mostly adults because nobody came up with a crazy answer. If I had a bunch of teenagers, we'd have had some crazy answers. But all answers were valid. Here's what they came up with. A clothes closet for all those who have need. Ministry for kids. We want to engage teachers, equipment, and space to help children learn. Ministry oriented to single parents and children of single parents. After school tutors who also focus on relationships, not, not just learning skills, but relationships with children. No cost or low cost quality child care. That was mentioned several times. Another person said, we want to create interest groups around young families' needs and wishes. Isn't that interesting? Ask young families what they need. Instead of you and I thinking we know what they need. I'll be honest with you. I don't even know what teenagers need. And I was in a classroom 11 years ago. But it's a whole different world. And I have no clue. And young parents, I have no clue. Education program for challenged individuals and families, senior adult outreach, respite ministry, a day out for caregivers and those who are being cared for. That we, we could provide food and recreation, engagement for those patients. This too had multiple mentions. Affordable health clinic, a free clinic, affordable medications, Uber service. An Uber service, not to go necessarily to the club, but an Uber service to go to the doctor or to the grocery store. Because some people have a hard time getting around. Some people can't afford a car. Uber service for the needy, the vulnerable. Ministry for every person, for every family to have enough food. Now, some of y'all may find that hard to believe. But I can tell you, unless our county is different, 25% of your children in this county go to bed hungry because they don't have enough food. Pay if you can restaurant. I have a friend. That's her goal in life. She, she wants to be on the farm and she wants to be in the restaurant and she wants people to have good food from the farm to eat and to sit around tables where Jesus is present. Pay if you can, restaurant. No war. Peace for the world. Now that might be a big goal. But wouldn't it be great if we could start with peace in our own homes? Peace in our neighborhoods? Peace in our community. 
One of our groups mentioned a, an outreach to Africa, and we already, as the United, uh, Alabama West Florida Conference, we already have a partnership with Tanzania. We could take part in that. An overseas mission, or at least out of the USA, develop and outfit an emergency relief team that they could go on mission work for states or counties or countries even that have a need where disaster has struck. We too have a resource for that in the Alabama West Florida Conference to help families whose homes have been destroyed by disasters. We have those resources that we could plug into and get involved with. You see, God is already at work and we can join God in the work that God is already doing and help some of these things come to pass. We have resources within our own congregation that, have, that can make some of this happen. Well, how freely are we supposed to do this? How freely are we supposed to be a means of grace? I shared with you last week, we are to become a means of grace to people, a means by which God shares His love. And how, are, how freely are we supposed to do that? Are we not supposed to save a little for ourselves? I had a friend who was preaching one time, a rather rotund, white, Baptist preacher. He was preaching in an Afri African American church. And uh, Tony was preaching up a storm because there was a little old lady in the front row going, Get him up! Get him up! Get him up! And Tony said, I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I was preaching so hard. And he said, She said, Woo! Save some for yourself. Y'all, I don't think we have to save any for ourselves. I think, if, I think the more we give, the more God provides. And the more God blesses, the more we can be a blessing. How do we know when we've done what we're supposed to do? How do we know when, when, it's, when it's over? How do we know when it's time to quit? Well, we don't. And so we do it to the least of these. Everybody all the time. Just everybody all the time. I heard an anecdote about Mother Teresa. Someone asked her how she could um, minister to the poor people on the streets of Calcutta. How, uh, you know, they had various and sundry terrible diseases. They were desperately poor, poverty stricken. They, it was just an awful thing. And they knew that people were in bad shape and and the story goes that someone asked Mother Teresa how she could manage to do that. And although I could not find the story, she, what I remember being said was, she said that she saw Jesus in the face of each person that she took care of. And that was how she did it, because she did it not for them necessarily, but she did it unto the Lord. I couldn't verify that story. But I think she gave the gist of what she was talking about in her Nobel Peace Prize acceptance speech. Here's an excerpt. It is not enough for us to say I love God, but I do not love my neighbor. St. John says you are a liar if you say you love God and don't love your neighbor. How can you love God whom you do not see if you do not love your neighbor whom you see, whom you touch, with whom you live? And so this is very important for us to realize that love to be true has to hurt. Let me, let me read that again. And so this is very important for us to realize that love to be true has to hurt. It hurt Jesus to love us. It hurt him. And to make sure we remember his great love, he made himself the bread of life to satisfy our hunger for that love, for his love. Our hunger is for God because we have been created for that love. We have been created in His image. We have been created to love and be loved. And then He has become man to make it possible for us to love as He loved us. He makes Himself the hungry one, the naked one, the homeless one, the sick one, the one in prison, the lonely one, the unwanted one, and he says, 
you did it to me. Hungry for our love, and this is the hunger of our poor people. This is the hunger that you and I must find. It may be in our own home. How do we serve God and neighbor? We do it under the least of these. In love, with love, through love, seeing the image of God in each soul whose shadow crosses ours. That is how we serve God in name. Amen. Amen. Would you stand as you are able this morning in body or spirit? And let us profess our faith to one another. We profess our faith saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the
I love you. Jesus loves you. Go in peace and serve you. Amen? Amen. Amen.